Hi, welcome to Nanny's Country Treasures. If you're new here, I'm Joanna. This is another one in my I Love Fall Most of All. It is not winter yet, y'all, so just hang on. I have a few more fall DIYs, so let's go. I absolutely love this one. It came out so stinking cute. So I have one of the pumpkins from the Dollar Tree and some of the pumpkins that are the garland pumpkins. And I just took three out and I have to fill the holes. So I'm gonna use some of this um, spackling from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna let those dry. Now I'm gonna take this hook off. That was so easy to take off, but I will tell you what, this leaf was not. I tried using my Silhouette spatula and that did not work. I don't know what kind of glue they had on this thing, but Lord have mercy, it was on there tight. So, I took my heat gun, and this is just my little heat gun because, you know, I didn't want to burn it or anything with a big one. So, I'm trying to get this hot and pry it up, and I could feel the sticky on the spatula, so I thought, yeah. That thing got so hot. And then, it's like a sticky tape like residue thing I don't know but anyway it was coming off but this heat gun was burning my finger so I put that down and I just start scraping and it it come off really good and then sanded the rest of the little pieces off so that's how I got that off it was a it was a it was still hot but it was a little trial but I got it so now I'm gonna take my white chalk paint and I don't know if this is old or what, but y'all, that stuff was thick. I liked it, but I didn't like it. Um, the coverage was great. I did have to do two coats over that black J, but two coats worked fine. So that's what went on it. So now my little pumpkins are dry and I sanded them off. I knew y'all didn't want to go through that so I'm just gonna take my orange Waverly chalk paint and it only took one coat to paint these pumpkins and I did not paint the stems as of yet so now I'm gonna take this English Ivy by Apple Barrel Got it at Walmart, and I am going to paint the stems. On the big one, I had to use two coats, or three, I'm not sure. It still stayed a little dark, but on the little ones, it took one coat. While I had the green on my brush, I went ahead and put a coat over the leaf. And then I'm gonna set that to the side to dry. My work surface is a mess, y'all. Sorry about that. Um, I'm gonna take these three pumpkins that are dry now and put these names that I cut out on my silhouette. They are my grandbabies that I have now. And I left this in here in case y'all haven't seen me do this before this is I work on a glass surface you can use a large glass cutting board and when you paint or glue or whatever you can just take your scraper and scrape all that junk off and then I use my ladybug back and just vacuum it all up or sometimes I wipe it in my hand and throw it in my trash beside me but anyways um I'm just going to take my duck contact paper. I love this stuff. I get it at Walmart. And that's what I use for transfer tape most of the time. And y'all have seen me do this a million and one times. So I'm just going to get past this. But I'm going to put my contact paper down, squeegee on the name, pull it from the back side, and then put the name on each pumpkin, squeegee that down, and go from there. 
So now all of them are done, and I'm going to take one of my Tim Holtz Distress Inks. Pretty sure this is Ground Espresso because it's one of my favorites. It's a little bit darker. So I'm just going to take a makeup brush from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to go around the edges of my pumpkins. And, y'all, I lost this <laughs> makeup brush when I poured my water out in my bathroom sink my drain um, screen thing is gone so when I poured my water out I didn't see this little brush and actually went down my drain hole I need to tell my husband actually but we're replacing the sink vanity anyway so hopefully I can remember to get it out when we replace it but anyways it wasn't working anyhow so I take one of the white ones that's more um, it's stiffer the stiffer brushes do better with this and I'm just making lines to define my pumpkin a little better and you know make it you know it looks better this way um you don't have to do the distressing around the edges like this that's up to you I mean you know me I like my stuff all stressed out or distressed out whatever you call it um I stay stressed out but <laughs> anyways um you don't have to do this part, but I did because I like it. But I do, in my opinion, believe that the lines define the pumpkin and give it dimension and just make it look better. But that's all up to you. So here's my other transfer. And y'all know that I've done this a million times. You know what you're doing. But I'm going to show you this because, you know, just to show you that, you know, stuff happens okay and this is how you remedy rim rim remedy it y'all <laughs> excuse me and looking back at this now i probably should have put paw paw first but you know i i didn't it is what it is oh well i ain't doing it again so it's going on there just like it is but anyway with this um a tip here you when you do especially a bigger design I'm going to take my blade and I'm going to trim the excess um, what the crud is that anyway the excess oh transfer tape my bad excuse me y'all it is early <laughs> it's early um anyways cut your extra transfer tape off because that will give you less of a chance of having bubbles wrinkles or you know putting it in the wrong wrong spot okay i'm laying this down but then i think well maybe i should put my little pumpkins on there the way i'm going to glue them on to see if i don't you know if i get it in the right spot or whatever so that's what i do but this is not the issue that i wanted to to show you that you know normally happens so anyways i stick this down here i squeegee it down y'all know the drill but when I go to pull it off, okay, my letters don't stick. Y'all have seen me do this before because nine times out of ten, I don't care what vinyl you use, you know, it happens, okay? It happens. When you pull your transfer tape, you want to push down and pull at an angle. Um, this makes it a whole lot easier when you're transferring pretty much anything, but especially words. When you have a letter that don't want to come up you just push it back down you can use your squeegee to hold it um it'll usually stay down but once in a while you will find that a letter pops off okay and you'll see this in a minute right there there went my g so to fix this i have very pointy tweezers and I just pull the G off and then I'm just going to place it back down like a sticker and it's no big deal you know it, this just things happen when you're crafting and there's easy fixes for it you don't necessarily have to always start all over or scrap the project but it's fixable so now I'm going to take my distress ink and I am just going to define this pumpkin like I did the small orange ones. 
and then put a little distressing on that. Now it's all distressed. Y'all didn't need to see me doing that again. So I'm just going to take this super glue, wood glue. You actually get it at Dollar Tree in the tool spot. And I'm going to add some wood glue. And then I'm going to add some hot glue. Wood glue for permanent, more, you know, more permanent hold. And the hot glue for temporary hold so it sticks so I don't have to clamp it. Um... I'm going to mark these, which it really didn't matter because I didn't flip it over to look at it. Y'all, I'm so silly. I don't know. I really don't. So, I could have missed. I don't know. But anyways, same process to glue all these down. And um, then I will put something on the top. So now I am going to take my dental floss, of course. I use this a lot. A lot of people don't like it, don't trust it. I've never had a problem or issue with it. And it's stronger when I pull and it sticks to itself, so I like this better. So I'm just going to thread my big-eyed needle and then tie a good knot in the bottom. I'm going to make like a scrappy bow. I was going to put a bow bow, a bow bow, a normal bow, <laughs> whatever. But I just, I wanted to do a little scrappy thing on here. Not a real big, voluptuous bow, you know, but just a little some something, something to put up at the top. And so, I take this roll of burlap that I got at the Dollar Tree, but you can find similar stuff like this at Hobby Lobby or other craft stores. And I just cut a piece off and I frayed the ends and then I had to trim it because it just, it didn't look even to me. But anyway... I trim it and then I pull one off to make it look a little frayed. Now I am going to just take decorative ribbon that I found at Hobby Lobby and I'm going to cut three strips each. So now I'm going to take the Buffalo Check Ribbon that I found at the Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna cut three of those. And then I'm going to take the burlap ribbon um, deal that I got at the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna cut three of those but I actually only used two of them. Now I'm going to pinch my ribbon in half and cut at an angle and make my dovetails on my ribbon. This just makes it look more um, professional and finished and I just, I like it this way. So that's why I do it this way. So now I'm just going to take and layer these staggered, just stack them. Um, I try to have order to it. Sometimes I don't have order to anything. So then I add my two um, twine ribbon pieces. This is decorative ribbon. I get it at the Dollar Tree and it's usually in the floral section and I usually have it all year long. Um, it's really, really pretty especially using it in the fall but anyways then I just stick my needle through and over and back through and then go around and around and then tie it off in the back and then I lay it on the burlap and I'm going to wrap it around that I didn't want to have to glue twice and I wanted it secure so I just 
secured it with my um, dental floss thread, whatever you use. Then I added that gingham bow or buffalo check bow that was on it in the first place. Just laid it on top, wrapped my string around, tied it, it's all secure. Now I'm gonna take the hot glue, after I fluff it out a little bit, I'm gonna take the hot glue and I'm just gonna glue it down. I use quite a bit of glue because I don't want it to come off or go anywhere. And it covers up the hole quite nicely. And it's so cute. I love it, I love it, I love it. Then I'm going to take the leaf and I'm just gonna tuck it under there. So I'm just hot gluing. And then I'm just going to tuck it in, smoosh it down. That is so cute. Even Paul Paul liked this, y'all. He usually doesn't say anything much about my crafting, but uh, he actually said, oh, that is so cute. So, hey, I got an approval from the hubby. That's a plus. <laughs> so, now I'm just going to add my twine back and I tie a knot in it. And I'm just going to push it through the hole and pull it. And it holds secure because the knot in the back was bigger than the hole. So, that worked out really, really good. And it's done. So, on this second project, I am going to take these color your own ornaments, these beads, and my um, cutouts, this brown paint from Hobby Lobby, and I am going to be making a cute little beaded garland to go on my coffee bar. So I'm going to take one of each of these ornaments. Now I'm just going to take this brown acrylic paint. You can use whatever brown paint you have. And I am going to add water to this and mix it up. And I'm going to make a stain. Normally I use Waverly Wax, but you know, I can't get my vinyl to stick to the wax every time. So I'm just going to use this. It works just the same and it came out so pretty. The color is so perfect. And I'm going to stain the front and back of each one of these except the cup. I'm going to leave the top of the cup so that I can add some um, what looks like whipped cream. Now on this one, I'm just going to draw a little line to where I basically need to stop. And this is what it will look like when you get it stained. Now I'm going to take that thick white chalk paint. And I am going to try to pounce it on there with a stiff brush to make it look like whipped cream. But that does not work like I thought it would. But either way, I get it painted nonetheless. So that worked out. Okay, so I realized that using my finger and grabbing some of that thick paint out of the lid and just dabbing it with my finger made a better effect than using the paintbrush. Okay, so I have all my little doodads stained and I just took a pencil and put um, detail, I guess you call it, in there and I figured that's, that's all it needed. It looked good to me. Now, these words, okay, it's, it's what I wanted to say, but the color was just awful. Sometimes we think things look good in our head, but when we go to do it, it's not what we envisioned. So, um, by the way, this end of this pokey tool worked wonderful for burnishing um, down this transfer tape and also... I used it to apply the decal and it worked so well I was impressed so that's just a tip in case you have one but anyway when I put this down it didn't show up and you'll see in just a second
did not like that. So I'm just showing you that I'm pulling the vinyl back off with those pointy tweezers that I have. Um, you can get those at Hobby Lobby in the yarn section or, you know, online. I'll try to find a pair and link them in my description. But anyway, I just pulled this vinyl off, cut out new white decals, placed them on, and there they are. And I love these sayings. I thought it was so funny. But my husband said I was a little crazy, but that's okay. I am. So I'm going to use these paper clips. And to use them, I'm just going to take my little wire cutters and I'm going to snip right on the inside loop and take it out. Then they will look like this. And now I'm going to see if I can actually insert it in these. I went from the front at first. That did not work. Go from the back. You have to spread it out. Put it in the back and twist it all the way around. You might have to spread out the back one too. And it hooks just like that. Push it to and then you can use this hook to go over your garland string. And those work out great. So I'm going to bend my garland in half. And then I'm going to place this one is the one that I want in the middle. So I'm just going to place this over. Actually, the bead is in the middle, so you can put it to either side. And then slip it over and pinch it, and there it is. So I see that that worked, so I'm going to take the other paper clips, and I'm going to snip them right in the middle, and take that inside loop off. And then I'm going to wrap them around each one, starting from the back, pulling all the way around, and going to the front. So I started to put this on and I was like, uh, I bent it in the middle to find where I need to put it to make it even. I sure didn't want to put it on my coffee bar and it be lopsided or crooked or whatever. So anyway, that's it. And now I'm ready to put it on my coffee bar. And this is my coffee bar. And you have to pardon the flooring and the trim because we live in a mobile home and we are having to fix some things and it's a slow go. We recently tore out the bar. That was a divider between the kitchen and the living room. And that's where my coffee sat. So I needed something. So my husband, um, we went out of town and, and picked this up from the marketplace. And I absolutely love it. I love decorating it, like I said. And there is my coffee pot and my little electric tea kettle. And I love this thing so much. It's so much healthier and the coffee is so good there's my little garland there's decor that i did last year and this year my diys and of course i had to hang my little scarecrow hat over there because i had nowhere else to put it if you like this video please give me a thumbs up you can hit that subscribe button and become part of my youtube family and ring that bell to be notified so you don't miss any upcoming videos Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. And always remember that you are a blessing.